again. Here we are with another tutorial, picking up from where we left off last time uh, with our clean line image of Jim Hawkins um, from Treasure Island. So I'm going to be going through quickly how to uh, put down base colors and create a nice clean file that will allow you to easily uh, edit and make changes to it as you go in, uh, in, in Photoshop here. Again, as I said before, I'm using Photoshop CS2, but don't worry. Uh, all the functions and tools that I'm using for this tutorial, just like the last one, are in pretty much every Photoshop since Photoshop 5. So all the, all the functions and things should be identical as I'm working across. I've got my floating line art layer. It's currently just called Layer 1. Um, I recommend that as you're working, you always save... Uh, your your files often and that you also make sure that you label your your layers as you're working so just double click the name double left click there and then just gonna call it line art nothing fancy just make it easy to follow along and one of the other things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight that line art layer and I'm going to lock this uh, first lock here which is locking the transparency what that means if we look again this line art is on its own floating transparency, so now the line art is locked in there. I made a couple minor changes to the line art since uh, since the last tutorial. I clarified one or two lines in the arm here, and I actually added his uh, little ponytail in the back that I forgot to do when I was cleaning up the image. But otherwise, it's identical to the one that you saw last time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to build my flats. Flats are essentially selection areas, broad flat areas of color that I'm going to use as my base tones for the color and it's also um, a series of easy to use selection areas. Let me go through and, and show you what I mean. First thing we need to do is turn this into uh, RGB color mode. Currently it's grayscale. Some people work in CMYK for print. I'm going to use RGB here for the ease of use. We don't want to flatten the image we want to keep it in layers. Then I'm going to create a new layer in between my background layer, my white page, and my line art. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to fill that background in with a 50% gray. I find it really useful uh, to do that when I'm working on choosing character colors because um, colors look different beside white and they look different beside black. Uh, obviously everything looks lighter compared to black than black and white tends to uh, make stuff look darker than it really is so if I drop down a 50% gray while I'm color selecting uh, it hopefully minimizes some of the the that color shifting as far as coming up with character color choices now how I want to do this is I want to go through get nice and close grab the polygonal lasso tool which is the second uh, lasso tool I want to turn off any anti-aliasing up here at the top. I want to have no aliasing whatsoever. Go to my layer here that I'm going to label as flats. And I'm going to choose a skin tone color. It doesn't have to be the absolute color that I want to use. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just going to be uh, one that I'm using to make the skin tone flats. I can easily change it later on. Now I'm going to go through with the polygonal lasso and right in the middle of my line art, very important, I'm going to carefully click, left click, and drag the poly line through the middle of these lines. Everywhere where his flesh tone is on his face. So grabbing the ear hold the space bar uh, as I work to shift the image if you weren't aware of that hotkey so that I don't have to zoom out and zoom in all the time just hold the space bar when I want to click drag and shift the whole image and then connect it all together then I use the fill bucket again no anti-aliasing turn on whatsoever click and fill. 
zoom out, do the same thing with his arm, his hands. Once you get the first flat selection created, it gets much easier. I will show you what I mean. The other thing to keep in mind is that the great thing about the polygonal lasso is you just drag straight lines. So here I can just do it all in one long straight line. The other thing you can do is you double click and it will connect back to the start. So here just double click, connects it all together, fill that in. The other arm and hand. Always trying to stay in the midst of my line art. I don't want to have any gaps. Line's almost straight, so it makes it really fast. Now all the flesh tone areas are done and selected on their own. That eyebrow obviously is uh, going to need to get colored in. Let's give them a brown hair color, a little bit paler than the default brown. So just select that off for the eyebrow and fill that in. Now here's the important part. When I take the line art away, this is the visibility, that little eye here to the left of my layer palette. I click that off and now I'm only seeing the other layers. So you can just see what's left. It's important that there's absolutely no soft edge between these two. Okay, that the two colors transition perfectly from one pixel to another and then the line art separates them. So what I do for the hair, it's going to make it that much faster. Watch what I do here. So on this side, facing currently nothing, I have to go through and select all the hair. Doesn't take long though. Flatting is one of those things you can do even if you're on the phone or doing other things within reason because it is more of a mindless kind of a mechanical process. Now I'm just going to double click and I've overlapped this huge part of the, the head but I don't have to worry because the only layer that I'm affecting here is this. So when I fill it's only going to fill the gray areas and nothing else. Just like that. And now that's all flatted out. So I didn't have to worry about selecting this line perfectly and around the eyebrow and along the forehead. Just select everything that doesn't overlap the color and then away we go. Just like that. So as soon as you get one selection area, they all start to sort of help speed up the process. Let me just do the shirt here quickly. Pulling the camera back a little bit. If you've got good mouse control, then uh, you can pull back a little bit more. Again, overlapping right through the neck because I'm not worried about the flesh getting filled in with the fill bucket. Almost done. Right through the arm, double click. I'm going to choose a pale blue gray for his top shirt, I think. Let's try this. That's a little too light. Go a little darker. There we go. Pull that back. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, we're going to cut ahead, rather than you watching me select through every single thing, I'll cut ahead and then uh, you'll see sort of the finished flats and we'll talk about why they work the way they do. Okay, I've finished up the flats now and you can see that all the color major areas are, are color selected. 
Uh, again, as I stated before, it's really important when you're doing flats that you have all aliasing turned off. So you have anti-aliasing turned off on your plug-in lasso. You have aliasing turned off on your on your fill bucket, so that you get this on your flats layer. If it was all by itself, here's how it would look. When I go up close, you can see right up close, we're going like 500% magnification. There's absolutely no soft lines. Let me show you the difference between an alias line and an anti-alias line. So if I've got this here, you can see how it's just all pixels. There's no uh, blending whatsoever. If I was to take this brush, exact same size, and draw it across, look up close at the difference there. Here, Photoshop's blending in those colors and making it um, a lot softer looking, which can look really nice for certain types of effects. But for this animation model sheet, we want to keep these lines as crisp and clean as possible and easy to select. If I grab the magic wand and I select this brush stroke here, notice that it grabs every single edge, every single pixel is selected right there. If I do that to this one, do you see how it grabs the entire fringe? It, it grabs gray areas around the color that I don't even know if I want. So what you want is you want to always have for this, especially when you're making flats, because they're not only going to be your base colors, they're also going to be your selection areas. You always want to use these stair-stepped perfect pixels as opposed to the blended stuff. We can use blending later on when we're coloring, but for our selection areas in particular, we always want to have nice, clean, perfect edges there. So this is a finished flats area. What this means is, is if I grab my magic wand and I turn off contiguous and I want to select all of Jim Hawkins' flesh tone, I click one, they're all selected. They're selected right to the pixel. So if I zoom in here, you can see every single pixel selected without a fringe, nice clean crisp edge. That's why you want it to overlap that line. A lot of people when they're doing coloring, they'll just use a fill bucket right on the line art on an anti-alias line. Let me show you what that does. The way I'll do that is I'm going to make a backup of my line art duplicate. I'm going to turn off my other ones here. And let's grab that flesh tone all over again. And I'm just going to hit fill. I'm going to turn off my transparency lock. Whoops. <laughs> turn on contiguous. Sorry. It looks pretty good from far away, but up close, do you see this fringe of gray pixels? That fringe of gray pixels is going to print really oddly. It creates what's called a haloing effect around your colors. And even with a clean line, you can see that it's breaking up the color and it's not as, as sharp as it could be. Compare that to this, where there's absolutely no edge problems, there's absolutely no gray pixels on our properly flatted picture. Turn it on again. See the difference especially up close. You can see that really broken broken gray line there. Okay, That's why you want to use flats. So you get a nice clean crisp color right to the edge of the actual line art. And it also makes nice clean selection areas. Let's say that during production they decide for whatever reason that Jim Hawkins is going to be a blonde. Now all I have to do is select that hair, go in here to my color choices, pick a blonde color that I like. It's a little too goldy. Click and fill. Just like that, I've got a nice clean selection area and I can change whatever element I want and you can't tell if I turn off the line out again perfect clean stair stepped pixels as if it's always been that yellow color control alt z going to go back to my brown but you can see how easy it is to select something and to utilize it you never want to get rid of that flats layer it's sort of your guide your selection guide that you're going to be using through the rest of the coloring process Okay, that's it for this time. More coming up as we add shadows and colors and color the lineup to finish off this character in the next tutorial.